And joining us exclusively here on the Dory Monson Show is Deputy Jesse Bailey, formerly with the King County Sheriff's Department. And am I correct, uh, Deputy, or Jesse? I'll call you Jesse. Uh, did you turn in your badge, as you said in the video? I did. I turned it in today. It was my final actual day um, working with the King County Sheriff's Office today. Your final words in that video were, I'm 10-7 for life. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, 107 means out of service. I'm out of service. Yep. Why did you do this? Why why did you feel motivated to uh, record this video? And what's a guy your age being on TikTok? You know, Dory, it's funny you <laughs> asked me that. That is the only and probably the only ever TikTok video. <laughs> and I actually had to have my wife uh, help me record it and edit it. Uh, oh, that's my motivation great. for choosing, choosing TikTok will come into the first part of your question. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I firmly believe that downtown, and when I say downtown, I say Mitzi Johanknik, our sheriff, absolutely has no idea what has been going on with the morale of the department. And like I said in my video, I once, when I was downtown, mentioned to a senior staff member, hey, this, I was the department recruiter for two years. I worked downtown. I was the only recruiter. And I mentioned, hey, we should do a, a command climate survey of what's going on with the troops because it's affecting me in the recruitment side. Because when they ask a deputy, hey, how would you like to work at the King County Sheriff's Office? And they go, well, it's kind of bad here right now. Yeah, it was yes, effective. it is. But the answer I got from the said senior person was the sheriff doesn't actually want to know the answer to that, the truth. Wow. So at the time, I took it for what it was worth. But now with this, this mandate for the shot, I, I just spent the last year working out back out in the field. They got rid of the recruiter position, and I spent the last year working out in the field. And I'm out there every day on the grind with the troops, the actual people – that are going to calls and doing all the things we do as cops. And the morale is lower than any that I've ever seen, Dory, ever yeah. in, in, in 30 years of service. And the sheriff has no idea. Instead, she's sending threatening emails out. So, so let me ask you, Jesse, I, I want to kind of go through your video chronologically because I made a bunch sure. of notes here. And the, the last couple of days on my show, I've talked about this middle school up in Marysville where a teacher had a thin blue line flag. Uh, because her sibling was a former cop, or is a former cop. She also had a pride flag, because apparently one of her siblings is LGBTQ. Uh, There are a lot of BLM flags. She was ordered to take down the thin blue line flag because it offended her colleagues, but the BLM and pride flags can stay up in the school. They say the thin blue line flag is political speech. And you talked about this you talked about defunding and hating cops and i talked about that extensively on my show yesterday that we're we're poisoning our kids against your profession you know dory unfortunately this was my dream job even after the whole time i was in the army all i ever thought about was being a cop it was my dream yeah and it slowly and it did happen slowly like from ferguson a little bit forward it just started to turn into a nightmare and when i say a nightmare i if you ask anybody about me In the King County Sheriff's Office, there's nobody more motivated than me. I may be slightly biased, but I always come in with a smile on my face, and I've never been in any real trouble. But it starts to be where, you know, it's one thing when the Joneses across the street don't really like you because you're a cop. I never took that personal, Mm -hmm. right? You don't like cops. You don't like somebody coming fresh. It's not personal to me. Right. But hating me because I chose a profession started to hurt. And when it started to feel like society was looking at it that way, yeah, that hurts. It hurts. That's the era we're in, and to a much lesser extent than you in law enforcement. But unfortunately, I have learned you know, <laughs> many, many times that we're in a time where I disagree with you, therefore I hate you. And we can't just be, I disagree with you, but I love you. We're still friends. We, you know, uh, and that's what is being taught all too often. And I just, uh, I'm sickened by that, Jesse. Yeah. No, it, it is. Um you know, Dory, I, one of the things that hurt me really hard, uh, I was once walk, walking by. Uh, it seemed like the kid himself had a, um, like this was prescripted. But he's yeah. like, Mommy, I want a sticker from that cop. And she goes, do you really? He goes, nah, they kill people. And just kept walking. Yeah. And even though that was scripted so I could hear it, it still hurt. But, but let me be clear. I was okay with everything. Like I said in my video, I was okay with everything that was happening within the profession. And I did my best to rally the truth. I was winning every day. Let's have coffee. Let's talk about the fun things we could do. But I, I think I think we just felt defeated, and the morale is so low. And I blame our sheriff for that. Oh, I, I know you do. You, you made that very clear. So let's get into that because uh, 
there's a card that I rarely play, Jesse, in my 26 years as a talk show host, and that is declaring somebody incompetent at their job. I have only said that twice about public officials. It's a former Seattle DOT director and Mitzi Joe Hanknick, because I've had inside sources who have made it clear to me how incompetent she is at her job. I did find it unusual, and I mean, just it's what makes your video so compelling that you just came right out and called her out by name. So I- explain all of this to me. So there's no way I would have ever done it when I was there because everybody's afraid of me. I, I can't even tell you how many times, even working downtown, people are like, what kind of day is Mitzi having? They're afraid of her, and they're afraid to talk to her because if you catch her on a bad day, she's going to get you. And, and it was always strange ways. that I, It never really got me, but I heard other people be like, oh, my God, you know, I went against the sheriff, and look what happened. Yeah. You know, Lisa Mulligan comes to mind, who I think is a fantastic leader. Okay, but, you know, I, I may not know all the intricacies, and I'm sure the sheriff can cover every little piece of what she wants to say. Here's something that's a fact, and facts don't care about your feelings. Her deputies are out here hurting in the field, right? They're hurting. I see it every day. I live it every day. She's missing in action. That's what we call her. Everybody out here calls her that. By the way, that's a great nickname for Mitzi. Mitzing in action. I love that. (laughs) She is. And, and, And she's missing. And here's the thing. The email that she sent out that was very threatening. It was a very get the shot or get out. Here's my thing. And I might know a thing about leadership, like I said in my video. Why couldn't she say the same message to the troops in the field? And trust me, I'm not the only one that feels this way. I'm the only one that still doesn't care at this point about his job so i'm willing to say it why couldn't you say the same thing hey i'm sorry guys i'm sorry that you have to get this shot i'm sorry that it's been mandated by dow constantine and everybody else um but my door is open for you for the ones that want to talk instead they create this morale person who's supposed to be there for the troops morale who sends like an email out on wednesdays you know what i mean but there's not actually out there why troops are and i say troops because that's just my army background but deputies are out here calling in sick taking days off going talking to counselors trying to confide in their sergeants about what do I do? One guy I talked to today said, I got 19 years on this department. I've done everything right. I've never been in trouble. Mm -hmm. And now I'm being faced with losing my job because I have to get a shot that I do not agree with. And he's going to get it. He's going to get the shot. Because he's got to make that last year. Well, I mean, we're we're down to the last five days for people, state workers, uh, a lot of public employees to get the shot. Uh, I don't know. What's the deadline for King County Sheriff's personnel? I don't know the exact date. Of course, it's sent out every single time she sends an email. She reminds you about get it or you're going to be fired by October 19th. I mean, my point is with all that, Jesse, is I've never I've said this on the air a million times. I don't know why Jay Inslee and and Dal Constein and Mitzi Johanken. Instead of being, uh, if you don't get faxed, you're fired. Because people are going to just dig in their heels. Because people don't like being talked, adults who are good, honest, hardworking people, they don't like being talked to like that. And they dig in their heels even more. Why don't they just say, hey, look at the stats. If you're vaccinated, your chance of getting hospitalized, chance of dying is less. Be positive about it. Like you just because said. Leadership. Yeah, exactly. And you and I talked a little bit off the air about... Uh, you know, you know leadership from Army. I know leadership from coaching. Great leaders, they let their people know how much they care about them, how much they love about them, how they will do anything for them, and then they'll run through a wall for you. And I've had bosses, as do you right now, or as of yesterday, who do 180 degrees the opposite of what you and I know about leadership. It's, it's true. I mean, the Army doctrine for leadership was the process of influencing others to accomplish the mission by providing purpose, direction, and motivation. I will tell you that Mitzi Johanknik does none of that. And, and she leads by fear. I mean, I'm not looking at a dictionary, but isn't that dictatorship? Well, it's, uh, it, it's, it's horrible leadership, I know that. And what struck me, you, you talked about being deployed five times, being in lots of hostile territory where, where the people who served under you had been killed. And you said the morale in the King County Sheriff's Office is worse than those deepest, darkest days, losing people in the Army? Yeah, and let me tell you, this is not to make a comparison to combat for all my veterans out there. This is not that. That It's a little bit of a different animal. Understood. But when you have those things going on, and you have great leaders that step up and say, what happened today is bad, and it cannot be undone, but tomorrow we are going to survive because of this. And you band together, right? That that, that brotherhood, that sisterhood, you band together— and you, you make it work. And I had fantastic leaders. I also had some bad ones in the Army. 
sometimes the bad ones teach you just as much as the good ones. But while I was <laughs> deployed, I had true. good leaders. I had good leaders. I had good leaders that said, hey, here's why we're going to survive this. And that's not a story. I'm not saying this to be facetious, and I can't express it enough. This has been echoed by every junior leader that I hang out with, all the sergeants, all the captains that I've met, all of them. They feel this way. And, and the amount of support that I've gotten from text messages, emails, and everything over the last, you know, since I posted that video, from the troops means more to me than any outcome. The sheriff may or may not overhear this. I don't care. But, the, but somebody to have a voice for them and how they're feeling is way more important to me than anything else. So how do you walk away from this job, Jesse? I mean, it, from the video, I don't know how old you are, but you look like a young guy. From what I saw in the video, you got a, a job that pays okay. How do you walk away from that? You know, it's a great question. A lot of my friends closest to me have asked that question. I've been serving since I was 17. I haven't been unemployed since I was 15 and a half. And, and as of today, I'm unemployed. <laughs> um, the way you walk away from that is I, I've made good choices in my life. Washington has been good to me in terms of real estate and those kind of things. Every time oh, I build okay. a house, I made a lot. There you know, you so I have a good savings and I'm debt free, which is the greatest gift I gave to my, my wife and I and my children is that I'm debt free. So nice. it's a leap of faith. I'm going to walk into Texas with no job. And uh, I feel that I'm very employable. I have a bachelor's degree. Um, I have a ton of leadership, like I said. I, I'm not worried about myself getting a job. I'm actually more sickened by the fact that I feel like I'm leaving on my brothers and sisters out here in the King County Sheriff's Office. I, that, that hurts me more than the thought of me. I'm going to be okay because I'm an American, and I don't carry that American attitude. Well, and that makes me sad, though, to hear that because I know some of your former colleagues who have left this area, just wonderful, wonderful human beings. And just the fact that so many of the great people in our region are going to Texas or going to the Deep South or going to Arizona, it's we're losing because of our political attitude because of how we treat people like you 20, uh, 23 years in the army 10 years in law enforcement and and we're driving you away and what are we going to be left with when all the experienced men and women who serve have said i've had enough and and all the activists they say we want people to make better decisions what happens when all the experienced people who know how to make great decisions are being driven away. You're 100% correct, Dory, and I'm going to add this. I will tell you, as the recruiter, and I, I did a really good job when I was there, I believe so, um, it takes about 18 months. I called it from handshake to hire to actually working. From handshake to hire and pulling the shift is about 18 months. Dory, I'm going to tell you this. They need us, the cops, more than we need them because we are not easy to replace, and the good ones are walking away. There's some really good ones walking away on October 19th. I promise you that. And they're not easy to replace. And we don't want cops to be easy to replace. We want to spend a long time vetting them. It's one of the things I was most proud of with the King County Sheriff's Office. We take a long time trying to vet good people. And a lot of good people are walking away. Me I just have a short time left here. But how many yep. of your brothers and sisters are still unvaxxed, do you think? So I don't, I don't want to quote to those numbers because I, I could be – I could be wrong. I just know what okay. I'm going to hear in the field. It, it, it's quite a bit. Um, you know, uh, it, it's hard to say. I, I call it bending the knee. There's a lot of my brothers and sisters out here who have said very early on, I will not do this. I'm not going to do it. You know, after going to counseling and calling in sick and trying to do the best they can, they've gotten it because they can't afford not to. And why, why doesn't Mitzi understand that? There are people that are getting this shot basically because they cannot afford. I mean, I, we make good money here. I'm walking away from about $125,000 a year job. And there's, you know, what kind of cop that's been doing this, you know, for 15 years and that's all they know can walk away and make that kind of money. Their family needs it. So they're getting a shot with the understanding of, hey, you know what? They're going and getting it on duty so that maybe it looks like an on-duty death. That's how they're going to do it. They're going purposely to go get the shot on duty so that they, hmm. hey, well, if I die, at least my family will get some money. How sad is that? Well, it's, it's outrageous. I mean, I've had some of my sources within the department there, Jesse, say that – you know, after these people are fired, if they hold to their, I'm I'm not going to get the vaccine, that be careful about calling 911 because the police may not respond. And especially if you're in rural King County, this is a huge area. Police may not respond. If you call for medical aid, 911, uh, you know, medic one, they might not respond. I mean, I'm just wondering, is Jay Inslee going to stand by this? And, I mean, there are 19,000 state employees who are still unvaccinated, Jesse. And 
I mean, is Jay Inslee going to really create this crisis? That's what I'm wondering. Well, my thought on that is um, if enough people stand up, regardless of your opinion of any movements that have happened, what have they taught us in recent history? Enough people with a voice can make a difference. That, whether it's the difference you like or not, that's still true, right? They made differences by having enough people with a voice. So I hope that I can lead the charge and that some people that want to fight this will get the courage to do so and not stand around and be bullied, like you said. And, and that's definitely something that's going on here in our department. You and I talked off the air. You are not anti-vax, right? No. I, you know what? I was vaccinated before va- being vaccinated was cool. <laughs> and I can show my card. <laughs> that's right. Oh, man. Well, Jesse, I, I really appreciate you talking with us. God bless you in whatever is next. Thank you. 23 years in the Army, 10 in law enforcement here. Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that we're going to be losing you to Texas because uh, it's creating a vacuum. Great people leaving is creating a vacuum. And unfortunately, I'm not sure that the vacuum is being filled by the most productive and positive of forces right now. That's true. Thank you, Dory. All right. Uh, Deputy Jesse Bailey, who turned in his badge yesterday exclusively here on the Dory Monson Show. And that is your big lead for today.